Welcome sight for many rain all around town this morning. Justin Horn has a look at where the showers are headed next. The city hoping to spark imaginations by holding a local startup competition. The winner gets a cash prize. It's just one part of Startup Week in San Antonio. Max Massey has a preview. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. The rain finally that we've needed for months, but the lingering effects of the drought still showing up in the form of fires and power outages, and it's keeping CPS Energy and fire crews busy. One of those fires on the northwest side near Loop 410 in Evers. Fire crews say a house burned this morning after a fire erupted in a fuse box outside of the home. The flames spread through the roof. Firefighters say the fire destroyed the home's attic and garage. Three people were inside, but they made it out safely. And firefighters also putting out an electrical fire in the 2700 block of El Paso Street. Crews tell us that it was an electrical pole that sparked. Then one of the power lines fell. It landed on top of the house that you see in your screen. There was one person inside that home, but they got out safely. The fire chief believes there was around $10,000 in damage here. 14 electrical fires were reported by SAFD today because of the drought. There has been dust buildup on power lines. CPS Energy says when light rain touches the dry lines, that caused tracking or arcing wires. The tracking can lead to pole fires, transformer fires, and downed lines causing outages. And at one point this morning, there were as many as 89 power outages affecting more than 5,700 customers. Here's the latest look at CPS Energy at the outage map, and you can see there are still a number of outages mostly in the north side of town uh, heading toward north northwest outside with live cam had some good rain this morning it looks like it's going to continue for a while as it heads from west to east right across our area love it uh, it was so beautiful to see this morning that rain coming down it, it's still there although we're starting to see the bulk of the rain move out of the san antonio area move off to the east still a good batch of rain if you're watching us from yorktown quero kennedy victoria uh, over towards the Howitzville area, and that batch will continue to move east, another little heavy area just south of Pleasanton. There is also a line of showers and storms out to the west. These are also moving east, so this will begin to move into Medina County, where places like Hondo have already picked up over two inches of rain here in the last 24 hours. San Antonio, more on the range of a half an inch up to an inch, but it, welcome rain, and it's been widespread around the area, which is fantastic news. Let me zoom in a little bit closer on some of these thunderstorms out to the west, because we are seeing some lightning strikes with this around Uvalde up towards Concan, and this is racing out to the east, so it does look like it'll hold together as it moves towards Bear County. Another hour or so, this may be moving back into San Antonio. In the meantime, we're seeing a, a little bit of, of some sun starting to peek through the clouds here in town. But I think we uh, can look for mostly uh, a cloudy day today. 62 degrees at the airport, 61 Kerrville. Look at those numbers. This is that cool air behind that cold front that came through last night. 63 in the Braunfels and around Bear County. Even some, seeing some 50s here on the northwest side. 59 right now in Holotus. It was 91 degrees yesterday. That's the big change. And as we look at the case that 12 hour forecast, we'll keep some rain chances in there, although they taper off as we head into the afternoon. Temperatures hold pretty steady in the 60s and then eventually falling into the 50s tonight. And just wait till you see Wednesday morning's low temperature. It gets chilly. More on that in just a bit. Look forward to it. Thank you, Justin. Almost a year after the last trial reset, a new trial date has been given to an Air Force major accused of murdering his wife. Andre McDonald is facing a murder charge and tampering with evidence charge in the death of his wife, Andreen McDonald. Today, 399th District Court Judge Frank Castro set the trial date for January 17th of next year in order to allow the prosecution enough time to gather their numerous witnesses, some who are out of state and out of the country. Judge Castro said there will be no more resets in this case. McDonald's trial is expected to last about three weeks. Later this afternoon, Erica Hernandez will have more on this hearing and an interview with McDonald's attorney who was not happy about not being able to go to trial next month. New at noon, a man walking across a busy highway did not survive his journey. Police say that man was walking across Highway 151 last night when a driver ran into him. That driver did stop and called for help, but the man died at the scene. The driver will not face any charges. San Antonio police say an 18-year-old man was shot and killed late last night. It happened just before 11 near the intersection of Dunton Street and Afcom's Way near Quintana Road on the southwest side. 
Police say someone started shooting during a car club meetup and they found the 18 year old victim on the ground. When another man tried to help him, he was also shot. That second victim is being treated at a hospital. You've seen it on the TV show Stranger Things and now South Texas Crime Stories is taking on the satanic panic as well. The hysteria spread across the United States in the early 90s as well as 80s with people all over the country getting arrested and convicted of crimes against children. But it turned out it was false. South Texas Crime Stories like, takes a look at the odd moment in history that got five people wrongfully convicted right here in San Antonio. Host Sarah Hernandez and Lee Waldman diving into these cases with new information that you might not have heard at the time. You can tune in to South Texas Crime Stories on Apple Podcast or Spotify Podcast. And don't forget, you can subscribe to this. Part one drops tomorrow morning. It has been nearly a week since Uvalde CISD Superintendent Hal Harrell's retirement was accepted by the school board. And coming up this Wednesday, there will be a Uvalde CISD special board meeting to discuss matters related to Harold's retirement. Also on the agenda for closed session is a consultation with an attorney regarding legal issues related to the retirement, as well as the search process to hire a new superintendent. The board could also interview a possible interim superintendent. There will now be some more opportunities for people who are looking to further their education. The Bear County Sheriff's Office is going to be offering high school equivalency classes at its offices. The sheriff says he hopes the partnership will also help his office. It is a thorn in many people's sides as they're out looking for, for gainful employment. That's something that, that many, many folks are either ashamed of or it's just a constant stressor in their mind that, gosh, I really got to get back and get that high school equivalency. Well, we're making it, it, making it easy, bringing it here into the community. And obviously our hope is that we can then open up uh, and use these folks as another uh, stream of, of potential applicants that we may, may later on process uh, for hire. Easy and free. The classes are of no charge. You can find more information on the SAISD website. San Antonio Startup Week is billed as San Antonio's celebration of startups and their journeys, but it is also an opportunity to teach the next generation about great local businesses, businesses ranging from 3D printing to meditation. Startup Week is now underway, and Max Massey gives us an inside look. We're creating automation software for manufacturers that use 3D printing, so making it easy for companies to get their items produced and get them to ha have it produced on time. Meet 19-year-old so. Caleb Scott, founder and CEO of PrintNet 3D. He joined the startup community when he was only 14 years old and he chose San Antonio for a special reason. San Antonio is very different from all of those communities just because it's a community. It's not people that are trying to go at each other and trying to, to win against each other. It's everyone collaborating and helping out and trying to build with each other. That's, that's why I choose San Antonio and that's why I, I believe everyone should choose San Antonio. San Antonio Startup Week has an extensive schedule for speakers, presentations, and learning opportunities. And what we're trying to do this year is we're trying to highlight all the startups that are happening, all the innovation that's happening, um, and also show all the resources that are available to entrepreneurs and founders here in our city. With the mayor speaking today and Bear County giving $100,000 to a startup competition, well, that buy-in from our community, it means so much for this ecosystem. Now, to see the mayor, see the judge, the county, see everybody get involved is validating. It's something that is just really exciting. We've seen so much growth in our local startup community over the last decade, but it could just be the start. I think it's going to be one of the biggest tech hubs as we continue on, but it's not going to look like anywhere else, so it's going to be exciting. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. If you have not filed your 2021 taxes yet, your final day to get it done has arrived. The IRS says today is the tax extension deadline. The deadline was originally extended to give people more time to file. Some will be filing a 1040 form to avoid the late filing penalty tomorrow. The IRS provides free filing for those whose adjusted gross income is $73,000 or less. Payments can be made online or by phone. For more information, head to the IRS website. Still coming up this half hour, the Cowboys got down early, put on a second half comeback, but still couldn't ground the Eagles. Highlights in sports on the way. The war in Ukraine ramping up tensions, even outside its borders. Who will be conducting nuclear training exercises this week?
The air was filled with suicide drones in the capital city of Ukraine overnight. They were sent by Russia, but suspected to have been provided by Iran. ABC's Ike Adachi reports, meanwhile, Ukraine is taking back more of its villages from Russian occupation. Plumes of smoke can be seen rising into the sky in Kiev after the city was rocked by Russian aerial attacks early Monday morning. In a social media post, Ukrainian President Zelensky claims Russia attacked the capital city with mostly self-destroying drones supplied by Iran. Iran has denied providing Russia with the weapons. Ukraine's defense ministry claims their troops shot down 37 Russian drones and three cruise missiles. Still, the blast hitting several residential buildings, according to Kiev's mayor. Emergency workers combing through the rubble, looking for survivors. ABC's Britt Clennett is on the ground. Firemen were able to pull out several people, but at least three were killed, including, we're told, a pregnant woman. Despite Russia's latest assault, Ukraine still on the attack in other areas. Ukraine claims its forces have taken back control of nearly 100 villages in just 10 days, mostly in the southern Kherson region. Over the weekend, two gunmen opening fire in the Belgorod region, killing 11 Russian volunteer soldiers and injuring 15 more as they were preparing to deploy to Ukraine. Russia calling it a terror attack. As tensions continue to rise, the U.S. and NATO kicking off nuclear training exercises in Europe. The pre-planned drills involving 14 countries with up to 60 aircraft. Russia planning to hold its own nuclear drills this month, likely to include live missiles. And Ukraine's nuclear chief says the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is once again disconnected from the power grid after rushing shelling. The plant was running on diesel generators after a short-term voltage drop. Ukraine's nuclear energy company calling for a demilitarization around the power plant. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Taking a look outside with live cam, you no doubt have already noticed a major change in the weather. Look at that temperature, 61 degrees. I put on a sweater this morning. It's 30 degrees cooler than yesterday. Wow. We were at 91 yesterday, 61 now. We've had rain most of the morning. It's just what the doctor ordered. It's been a nice change. We still have some rain out there. We'll show you the radar coming up. The aquifer, surprisingly, is down two tenths of a foot today at 630.7. My guess is that it will start to rise a little bit tomorrow with some of this rainfall. And the pollen count, because of the rain, molds are high. They're at 1,640 ragweed is low. Radar update plus, we'll take a look at some rainfall totals coming up. What a wonderful morning, wonderful midday, wonderful afternoon. Mm -hmm. That rain was really nice listening to <laughs> nice. last night. It was. It was a nice this, lullaby. I would say the only thing better would have been to be able to sleep in this morning <laughs> in the rain on a Monday. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know what? We're very excited that there is rain. I'm, I'm glad to be here where I can be using the radar. It's been so long since we've had a chance to see uh, rain uh, and widespread rain at that across the area. We still got some showers stretching from Quero Kennedy down to Beeville uh, this afternoon. Victoria still seeing some rain. Uh, right now we're seeing a little bit of a lull in the activity around San Antonio. So there's not much here. There are a few light returns as you get up in northern Bear County. But the rain has moved out. We are watching though a broken line of showers and storms working their way east. This should make it here. I'd say within uh, the hour or so it's moving pretty quickly. In fact, we can put a tracker on it here for you and uh, bring it uh, this way at about, uh, let's see, 40 miles per hour or so. And so it should be here, I'd say around 1 o'clock or so, with these showers and storms moving in. And uh, we'll get a little bit more rain. That's probably the end of it, though. Once this moves through, I think we'll probably uh, be done with the rain for the rest of the afternoon, uh, with maybe just a few light showers left over as we get into tonight. So a couple rounds here, and the numbers have begun to have begun to add up, and they're pretty good. You get out towards Del Rio, we're over two inches now. Eagle Pass, over two inches. Hondo, one of the big winners, 2.52 there. Kerrville, close to half an inch. And then you should get around San Antonio. Now, I know if you're watching from New Braunfels and Seguin, you're saying, hey, what about us? Wasn't so great. Only two hundredths of an inch there in Seguin, about a quarter of an inch in New Braunfels, and kind of a hole over parts of Kamal County where they didn't get much at all. Hopefully, we'll get some more chances down the line. But around San Antonio, 0.61 at the airport, 0.7 in Holotus, 
And again, Hondo, 2.52 there. So uh, some good range to get out into parts of Medina County. There's the scene right now. We've got cloudy skies, 62 at the airport. North the winds at 10. In most places are in the 60s now. That cool air sinking all the way down into deep south Texas. So 61 Kerrville, 64 New Braunfels, 60s here around San Antonio. Temperatures will hold pretty steady today. They may come up a degree or two, but don't expect it to be a warm day with these clouds hanging around. And then as we go forward, it's the low temperatures you are really going to notice by Wednesday morning. I think we have lows around 44 degrees. That's when the sky's clear. And we get that good radiational cooling 55 tomorrow morning, but Wednesday morning, 44 Thursday morning, 49. And then they start to moderate as we get back into the weekend. So expect some cold mornings ahead. Your case had 12 hour forecast. 40% chance of rain 1 to 2 o'clock, 30% chance 3 p.m. And then we'll start to see the rain chances sort of taper off as we get into the evening hour. 64 at 6, 63 at 7 p.m. And look for 61 by 11 o'clock. Still with cloudy skies. And tomorrow we'll see those clouds kind of slow to clear. There is the front and you see the rain across South Texas and it's been stretching from West Texas down into deep South Texas. Some drier air starting to work in across the Red River. 68 Dallas, 60 Wichita Falls. There's some sun up here, so temperatures are just a little bit warmer. 54 Lubbock, 52 in Amarillo. Our extended forecast. We're going to go 68 coming up tomorrow. Slow clearing, so we'll start with some clouds early. I'd say by about uh, 1, 2 o'clock, we may start to see the sun pop out. And from there, we're looking at a lot of sun all the way into the weekend. As I mentioned, 44 Wednesday morning, then 73 for a high, 80 on Thursday after 49, and then 84 Friday. So warm afternoons, but chilly mornings. It's going to feel a lot more like fall. And then as we get into the weekend, 86 both Saturday and Sunday. We'll watch for a little more moisture coming in Sunday and maybe some more rain chances as we get into next week. But this has been a really welcome sight, and the numbers are adding up for most of us. Very nicely done. Yeah. We finally got some rain. Beautiful. Hey, it was a rough day for Cooper Rush. He got rained on on his parade. Cowboys lose to the Eagles, and he probably lost his starting job. We'll explain why. And San Antonio FC finishes the regular season as one of the best teams ever on the pitch. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. You are looking at next week's starter for the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott. More than likely, he missed his last game with that thumb injury. And after what happened to Cooper Rush last night, if Dak is ready, no question, he will go. Early second quarter, the Eagles get on the board first. Hand off, Miles Sanders, five-yard touchdown. 7-0 Eagles. Next possession for the Cowboys. Play action. Rush fires for Michael Gallup, but the ball is tipped in a crowd. Intercepted by C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Eagles capitalize on the takeaway. This time, Jalen Hurts on a run pass option, slings it to A.J. Brown. He races in, 15-yard touchdown. Philly jumps out 14-0. They lead 17-0 late in the quarter. Rush trying to make something happen, but this pass is picked off by Darius Slay. That leads to another Eagles field goal. With a 20-0 lead, the Cowboys looking for a spark. Here it is, Cavante Turpin. He is returning the ensuing kickoff 63 yards all the way down to the Eagles, 41. The drive stalls. Brett Mayer comes in, 30-yard field goal. It's halftime, and it's 20-3 Eagles. Third quarter, Cowboys' first possession. Zeke Elliott takes the hand up. Cuts left all the way back across the field. Untouched 14-yard touchdown is 20 to 10 after the Dallas defense gets a stop. Cooper caps a 15-play, 93-yard drive, 7-yard touchdown pass. And Jake Ferguson, nice move right there. In the fourth quarter, suddenly the Cowboys only trails 20 to 17, but the Eagles offense comes alive again. Next drive, play action. Hurts finds Devontae Smith, 7-yard touchdown. They go for two. They don't get it, so Philly only leads 26-17. Cowboys trying to stay in it. Next drive, rush under pressure. Oh, oh that's not good. Underthrown, Gardner Johnson comes up with the second pick of the game. That's Rush's third interception of the game, and that sealed it. Here is your final score, 26-17 Eagles. Dallas now 4-2 and two after the game. Head coach Mike McCarthy on the slow start. Obviously, the start of the game uh, was in their favor. Um, obviously, obviously, we got behind, uh, but, you know, I think like anything, the big thing, you know, we talked about in the locker room was, you know, just the, the emotion of the game. We, you know, you knew that coming in, and, you know, you got to be better in the discipline penalties. You know, we had too many discipline penalties, and we had, and we had three, you know, three giveaways. So, um, you know, there's a lot of momentum, which, you know, you have in these types of games. You know, it's uh, an, an excellent competitive arena to compete in. And, you know, I, I thought we just kept we punched back every 
every time they, you know, they hit us with some things, um, you know, and then we got going there in the second half, in particular in the third quarter, running the ball and the up-tempo offense obviously was a help. We were trying to get to it, you know, in the first half, uh, just, you know, we was trying to do it after a, you know, after a third, after a first down in the series and, you know, just, just couldn't get it going. So um, just got to be cleaner, you know, had some young guys that, you know, we're still growing in some areas on offense. You know, we knew that coming in here and, you know, it's part of the way we've been playing. Um, but uh, the emphasis all week was running the football and stopping the run. So, um, and that obviously was a big part of this game. I mentioned the penalties. They had a couple of dumb penalties yesterday. All right, so they do need to clean it up. Sunday noon, AT&T Stadium. They host the Detroit Lions. San Antonio FC wrapped up one of the best regular seasons in USL championship history last night with a 2-2 draw against Orange County SC. Christian Barano had the highlight of the match. Beautiful equalizer in the 46th minute. San Antonio finishes with a 24-5-5 overall record, 77 points. That tied for the most in a single season, and they sit second all-time in points. The club earned a bye week in the first round of the USL Championship playoffs, so they'll next take the pitch for the Western Conference semifinals. It's coming up Friday, October 28th, Toyota Field. I believe it starts at 8.30. San Antonio has home field advantage throughout the playoffs, so what a great season for those guys. Whew. Way to go. Medication used to reduce the symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder could be in short supply. What you do if you have trouble filling your prescription now. Have you heard about the collagen craze? It's a trend among people wanting to turn back the clock, but is it really the answer to staying youthful? We'll tell you more about it today in the News at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. A new look at a police officer ambush in Bristol, Connecticut. ABC's Rena Roy with the footage released by the Office of the Inspector General there. And a first look at the moments the third officer was hit and took the suspect down. Shots fired, shots fired. Dramatic Four body camera Roy. footage authorities say shows the moment gunfire erupted in Bristol, Connecticut, killing two police officers last week. Officer shot, officer shot. The vantage point from a third officer who was also shot. Ugh. In what investigators are calling a planned ambush. Just before 11 p.m. last Wednesday, police got a 911 call for a domestic violence incident between two brothers. Shot fired, officer down. When officers arrived, authorities say the shooting began. That 911 call appearing to be a deliberate attempt to lure officers into a trap. Sources say the suspect, 35-year-old Nicholas Brutcher, was armed with an AR-15 style rifle, killing Officer Alex Hamsey and Sergeant Dustin DeMonte, injuring Officer Alex Ayarado. Police say the suspect fired more than 80 rounds. Ayarado, seen on that body camera footage, firing a single fatal shot from behind his police cruiser, killing the alleged gunman. One down. Suspect down. His brother hospitalized with injuries. Authorities say Officer Ayarado's use of deadly force was justified as Connecticut mourns the two officers lost. Sergeant DeMonte had two kids with a third on the way. Officer Hamsey is survived by his wife and parents. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Federal prosecutors want Steve Bannon to be sentenced to six months in prison for contempt of Congress. That's according to a recommendation that was filed today. A jury found the former top advisor to former President Donald Trump guilty on two counts of contempt of Congress back in July. He had refused to provide documents and to testify before the select House committee investigating January 6. Prosecutors say six months is the top end of the sentencing guidelines for this. The government also seeking $200,000 in fines. Prosecutors say that Bannon refused to disclose his financial records in the pre-sentencing investigation. And they say he has insisted he's willing and able to pay any fine imposed, including the maximum fine on each count of conviction. Overseas, more than 600 individuals have died in some of the worst flooding Nigeria has seen in a decade. That's according to the country's Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs on Sunday. It also says more than a million people have been displaced during the 2022 flooding season in Nigeria, and at least 2,400 individuals have been hurt. Thousands of homes also damaged. Live look outside. It is going to be cloudy today and probably much of tomorrow. 
and you might want to grab a sweater for tonight because we're talking chilly temperatures. Yeah, it is going to be chilly and we're expecting those temperatures to dip down into the 50s tonight and then we've got some 40s in the forecast as we get into Wednesday and Thursday morning. So it's going to be uh, a chilly stretch here, something we're not very used to right after this uh, summer that was just so brutally hot. Uh, we have gotten some uh, KSAC Connect video coming in from places like Poth, showing some good rain there. And uh, it's so good to see rain falling over a widespread area, as we talked about a little bit earlier. A lot of cloud cover, too. There are some breaks in those clouds as you get into the hill country, but another little batch of rain that will work east towards San Antonio here soon. So we're not done with the rain just yet here in town. You look at the temperatures, 50s and 60s here across Texas, but it's even colder as you get up towards places like Minneapolis, 37 there, 29 International Falls, usually one of the nation's cool spots. But it does show you that we're finally getting some of that cold air coming in from Canada, and some of that is pushing down into Texas. At least we're feeling a little bit of it today. Your KSAT 12-hour forecast, 64 degrees at 1 p.m., 64 at 2 p.m. We're going to keep in a 40% chance of rain. Then the rain chances fall off. 30% chance as we head into this evening. Temperatures holding pretty steady there in the low 60s and then eventually again falling into the 50s by tomorrow morning. Skies will clear, but it'll take a while tomorrow. We'll take a look at that forecast and look at the rest of the weekend ahead to the weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. For those who depend on the ADHD medication Adderall, you might be having some issues getting prescriptions filled. There is a new manufacturing delay of the generic versions of this pill. CNN's Mandy Gaither explains, however, that there is a way to fill your meds. It's used to reduce symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but the FDA says some generic versions of Adderall are in short supply. It's the, the most well-established treatment for that by far. Uh, so this could be a significant issue for a lot of kids. The agency's drug shortages webpage shows back orders for several generic forms of the drug are expected to last into March, as well as a back order on one name brand dosage that's expected to resolve this month. The FDA says one of the companies, Teva, is having intermittent manufacturing delays. While other companies continue to produce the drug, there isn't enough to meet demand. If you have trouble filling your prescription, pediatric psychologist Benjamin Fields with Nationwide Children says talk to your doctor. There's other stimulant medications too, and they could they could talk about whether there's options that their medical provider thinks would be appropriate. Uh, and I would certainly have them do that. Field says behavioral health experts can also help kids function with symptoms of ADHD. That may mean changes in things like homework during the shortage. If a medication that they're utilizing to get through that is really essential and not available, maybe we make a call in the short term that we're going to change some of those demands. In a statement, drug company Teva says we are fully committed to uninterrupted supply and continuing to manufacture and distribute as much product as possible each day. We are working closely with our manufacturing facility and the DEA to see what additional volume we may be able to support in the future. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Walmart selling over-the-counter hearing aids for the first time in company history. The devices can be purchased without a medical exam, a doctor, or prescription. This comes in the aftermath of the Food and Drug Administration's new ruling regarding hearing aids. The FDA says their policy change will make hearing aids more accessible to the general public. Officials say they will be available to U.S. shoppers who are at least 18 years old with Perceived audio issues. The aids cost between $199 to $999 per pair. It's something that everyone who shops online needs to know. Those free online returns could be coming to an end for some of your favorite sellers. How to get around the costs. And the final showdown between Larry Strode and Michael Myers lured horror movie fans to theaters this weekend, but was it enough to scare off the competition? We've got a look at the top five films at the box office coming up. More and more travelers are saying that their luggage is being mishandled at the airport. What's behind the issues and how some people are finding ways to protect their property using technology.
More travelers are avoiding checking their bags when they fly. A TripIt survey shows that 41% of flyers now say they will carry on their bags rather than check them in the future. The main reason? Check bags get lost or rerouted. There were 1,700 Americans in the TripIt survey. One in six said their luggage was lost or delayed. 23% say they will use their own baggage technology like an Apple AirTag if they do. That is in line with federal statistics. They show more than 1.7 million bags were mishandled last year by U.S. air carriers. A September survey says that 60% of flyers reported some kind of disruption while they're traveling by air this summer. Transportation experts agree that staffing shortages at airports combined with high travel demand are the root of the problem. The competition for your dollars while web shopping could soon get even more intense. Some companies are changing their return policies, and that may affect where you want to shop. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis on how it could cost you more now. As the holiday shopping season ramps up, buyers beware. Some major retailers are adjusting their shipping return policies, making free returns a thing of the past. I just was kind of surprised. Online shopping soared during the pandemic, but so did returns. The National Retail Federation reporting $218 billion worth of online purchases were returned in 2021, more than double the year before. All signs point to the era of free returns probably coming to an end in the near future. They're costing retailers millions of dollars every year, and that's because shipping has gotten more expensive and labor has gotten more expensive as well. Business Insider reporting many shoppers do what's called bracketing, buying the same clothes in different sizes and colors, then returning what they no longer want and doesn't fit. H&M announcing on a recent earnings call it will test a fee to ship back returns in certain markets. When I saw that there was going to be a deduction from my refunds, um, it kind of made me reconsider if I would really be shopping online as often. Among other retailers currently charging shipping fees to return by mail, Zara charging $3.95 for any returns to a drop-off point, Abercrombie & Fitch a $7 shipping fee to return, J. Crew's prepaid label coming in at $7.50, and JCPenney charging a flat shipping rate of $8. I think eventually they'll just end up paying for it because consumers want to shop and they want to make sure that they are returning the items that they don't want anymore. Experts say there are still ways to avoid those costs. Most retailers let shoppers return online purchases for free at brick and mortar stores. Also, see if the store will do free shipping for exchanges rather than returning and make those returns within the 30-day window you commonly see from retailers. Outside with Live Cam, we're just talking about, it seems like it's been at least a month and a half. Think about that. Since and we have and some, even some in that month rain. and a half, when we did have the rain in August, some people didn't get yeah. very much at all. It's like, man, this is nice. Oh, it is. Uh, out in it for a while. It really. And, and there's a little more coming our way. So we're, we're not done just yet. But officially at the airport, we've picked up about six tenths of an inch. Hopefully we can add to that a little bit. It's been wonderful to see. The temperatures today, it's been one of those upside down days. So we reached our high temperature just after midnight, 73. The low has been recently. We dropped down to 61 which uh, is about average for the average low. The records are 96 and 40. Thankfully, we're nowhere near that. Today is going to be a cool day. Tomorrow is going to be a cool day. We'll have another look at that forecast coming up. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead Stormy, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome our lost loved ones back to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each has a specific purpose. The origins of Pan de Muerto can be traced back to Mesoamerica, when the Aztecs would place food offerings at tombs. This is believed to nourish the souls on their journey to the living. There are many variations of Pan de Muerto. Some loaves are made to look like the human body, others are made to look like bones or skulls. They are often flavored with orange blossom and topped with sugar or sesame seeds. You can place pan de muerto on your ofrenda along with the rest of your loved one's favorite foods. So this is how magical Justin is. So we were talking about how long it's been since we had a significant amount of rain. And look at him, he's already built a graphic that explains it perfectly. We have those numbers. Yes, we, we do. do. We can pull it right up for you. Here you go. <laughs> 
Uh, so how many days has it been since we've seen a half an inch or more at the airport at San Antonio International? Today's the day, guys. Wow. We got over half an inch. There, zero. So we've, uh, we've reset that number, but it is over an inch. It's been 54 days now, August 24th. I don't think we're going to get to an inch of rain today, so this probably holds. And this is the number that's pretty astounding. It's been 369 days since we've seen two inches or more at the airport. It was back on October 13, 2021. That's kind of wild to think about. Now, this is not a perfect way to look at things because you have to keep in mind that other places have seen more rain than this. OK, uh, over the last year or so, we're talking about one specific st spot, the the airport, but it, it does give you kind of a, a general idea of just how dry it has been. Our rain events have been good. They've been few and few and far between, but they haven't been great where we've seen those really heavy rain events. Uh, and we don't see that uh, really today. There's been a few spots that have gotten over two inches of rain, but that's west of San Antonio. So as we go outside for you, we've got mostly cloudy skies, 62 degrees at the airport, 65 Stinson, 64 Kelly, 63 at Randolph. And a good north northeasterly wind, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's been a little bit gusty from time to time today, but not overly windy. And as we look at the radar, we've got some more showers coming in from the west. Now, this is a line of showers and storms is kind of weakening as it does move east, but it should work its way here to San Antonio shortly. It is almost to the Bear Medina County line. So a few more sprinkles and uh, light showers will work their way in here, adding on to what is already uh, some wet roads out there. So again, we have to pass along you know, be careful uh, because we did have a lot of crashes this morning uh, around Castroville. The rain starting to move in Honda, which has already picked up a good amount of rain today, seeing more and these showers again should be here in the San Antonio shortly. Uh, we're also noticing some rain down to the south around Devines, Catula, uh, Carrizo Springs, picking up a little bit of rain. If you're watching from Del Rio, a few more showers trying to pop up now there between Del Rio and Eagle Pass. So there's still some lift coming in from the west. And we still could see a few more light showers before it's all said and done. Temperatures are the other big story. We're at 62 degrees at the airport, 64 in New Braunfels, 64 Hondo, 65 in Pleasanton, and around Bear County, mainly low to mid 60s. And I don't anticipate these numbers changing much just because we have all this cloud cover in place. Uh, temperatures will hold pretty steady. As we look at the water vapor, we can get a better idea of what's going on. We've got a little spin right there over to parts of New Mexico. That is giving us a lift, plus we have that front moving through. So you have the lift over top of that front and you get showers and storms. So this is usually a pretty good setup for us and that has been the case today. And the big picture here shows that rain stretches from West Texas down into our area and then east over to or towards Houston. Some drier air starting to work in from the north and east, so things are dry across North Texas. And a lot of cloud cover. And with cloud cover in place, that's why temperatures really just aren't going to warm up all that much. Plus, we have that good northeasterly wind ushering in some of that cooler air from the north. Our KSAT 12 hour forecast. We'll go with a 30% chance of rain by the afternoon. Temperatures 64, 65 around dinner time, and then we'll really see the rain chances fall off tonight. Tomorrow, we'll start off cloudy, and then we'll see the skies clear a little bit. So here's how it looks with our computer model. Just a 30% chance of showers around 7 p.m. And then as we get into midnight, you'll see the radar become far more quiet. And then Tuesday morning, maybe a few lingering showers early, and then the clouds begin to break up by noontime. And then by the afternoon, we've got some sun back in the forecast. We're going to see a lot of sun beyond that. So 68 tomorrow, we start off at 55. With clear skies, though, Wednesday morning, we're all the way down to 44. 73 for a high Wednesday afternoon, 80 on Thursday after starting off at 49. Cold mornings, beautiful afternoons. We should see a good stretch of fall like weather after today. Justin, what's it like to actually have something to talk about? It's amazing. I love that we got to dust off the radar. It feels great. <laughs> You're a hero today. Yeah. Thank you. A scary movie dominating the charts in its opening weekend, where other films landed, still ahead. Check it out on the movies this weekend. Halloween Ends began its run in first place with $41.3 million. It was less than expected, but still the best debut of any film since Nope back in July. After two weekends on top, Smile fell to second, but $12.4 million pushed the horror movie past the $70 million box office mark. Lyle, Lyle Crocodile dropped to number three, taking in 7.4 million. The Woman King held steady in fourth place, earning 3.7 million. Amsterdam fell to fifth place on ticket sales of 2.9 million. 
And today, you might want to stay indoors and watch a little SA Live because it's raining outside. Ooh. Yes, and yes. we are gearing you up for Halloween and any spooky shindigs you may have. Yep, and if you're going to stay indoors, time to have a snack. And yeah, Nuvia Castillo, owner of Meats and Treats Charcuterie, is here. We've got everything you need, and just in time for Halloween, right? You're, yes. You got a little twisted sense of humor going on here. Right. Look what she made. Well, just a bit. Yeah. And, uh, no one was harmed in the making of the charcuterie <laughs> board. Mm -hmm, believe Definitely. It or not. I mean, look at that Halloween skull just in time for Halloween season, and you can't have a party platter without the skull itself. It just screams Halloween. <laughs> okay. We're gonna we're gonna get a lesson on how to maybe make one of those things coming up. Speaking of making. Yes. Take a look at this. Cute kids costumes with cute kids that don't cost much. We're showing you how to make some great DIY Halloween costumes with, of course, these adorable models. Speaking of costumes, you gotta head to the theater, and that's where Jen is. Coming up today on SA Live, we're at the Magic Theater getting a preview of Eddie and Vinny. We'll tell you how it's helping audiences better understand what it's like to have dyslexia. And need some comfort food to warm you up? How you can make mac and cheese even better? A local chef shares her simple but delicious recipe. And that made us think, what mm -hmm. is really good to eat on a day like this? Could it be mac and cheese? Could it be just a little piece of cheese? Or, uh, <laughs> what do you think? Yes, what, of course, is your favorite food on a rainy day? Let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. You may see your answer in the show. Well, in Mike. Yes. Still pretty cool out there. We got temperatures in the 60s. A few more light showers trying to work through San Antonio. So we'll still see some off and on light rain today. Temperatures hold steady in the mid 60s. Tomorrow clouds are slow to clear, but I think by the afternoon we get some sun. And then from there we get some beautiful weather, although it will be chilly both Wednesday and Thursday morning. Don't put the jackets up yet, guys. That's a good idea. Well, keep them out. Keep them out, yeah. yeah. It's gonna be interesting. We got the cute kids with the costumes. Yes. Are we gonna need like and a that charcuterie? It was a scary charcuterie board. Was it scary? Well, it's supposed to be. It's Halloween. Oh, I, don't, ooh, I don't want. I scary. like that. I don't. Want, and mac and cheese. How can you go wrong? If they live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. <laughs> dun dun dun. Okay, that thing is just. <laughs> I don't know if it was a, I want to say hello and happy Monday, but I don't know if it's a happy Monday for that poor soul right there. Halloween is just two weeks away. Are you ready? Good afternoon. We need to make that thing talk. Is, does the jaw move on it or not? It, it oh does? my gosh, oh, make wait, it talk. Wait, 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 wait. Here, do it, me... do it, go around. Make, I know this is all he's been wanting to do. And... Hello, welcome to SA Lot. No, not me. The, the, <laughs> the, not... Okay, say, that's some, really... say something. <laughs> I, I, I just noticed that there's like. Say anything. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everyone. Back to you, Fiona. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. He's I've had my. my fun. I'm Fiona. Of course, it's a rainy day today, right? <laughs> yes, it is. And you we have. You would know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, I. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's been a long weekend. Okay. We have a delicious mac and cheese recipe coming up. You know, that good comfort food. And that made us think mm -hmm. on a day like this, mm -hmm. what do you like to eat? I know what you like to eat what? on rainy days. It what? is always like grilled cheese and um, tomato basil soup. Or, or any kind of soup, yes. Grilled mm -hmm. cheese and soup. But specifically you like that, right? Am I right? Am I remembering that right? The tomato? I should know these things about you. <laughs> No, but I mean, any kind of soup. Tomato yes. soup is very good with a good grilled cheese, too. So okay. how about you? I have to say the same. Yeah. Tomato basil and a good grilled cheese. Mm. Mm -hmm. So let us know, what's your favorite food on a rainy day? However, mm -hmm. charcuterie is pretty darn good, too. And if you're gearing up for your Halloween party, our next guest can help make sure the snacks have a spooky vibe. Boy, that's the understatement. All right, Nuvia Castillo, oh owner of gosh, Meats and Treats Charcuterie, <laughs> is here to show us how to make a char... Bootery board! No, 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 Welcome. guys. Oh. Not char bootery board, char boo. Like in Halloween. Oh! <laughs> okay, I thought it was this segment was going to go a whole different direction. <laughs> We've been working on that chick all morning long. Did he lose an eye? <laughs> oh, he may have lost an eye. It oh might have been when you were trying to make him talk. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. Oh, okay. there we go. That was easy. <laughs> All right. Now he can see. But how do we get started? Yes, okay. definitely. So you're going to go ahead and grab your mini skull that you have there. Okay. And we're anyway. going to make it like reality. You're going to take your pros uh, prosciutto. And prosciutto and just looks 
I it, know. Amazing. It, yes, it has those white <laughs> lines, perfect for that veiny look. Okay. And you're just gonna take it and cover your skull. Cover you're your gonna skull. work it around. Make sure you get right there in the eyes. Make sure you get oh, in the I teeth mm -hmm. and just work your way around that. Okay. Which where do you want it to fold in the back or do you so, you know what I mean or? yeah so get creative with it so oh. you're just gonna go oh, ahead God. and wrap it and then you're just gonna and, yeah and definitely when you, and like when you push it in the eye socket so <laughs> they, I feel like I'm giving it like a facelift <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm like, let me pull this back here. There we go. Oh Less wrinkles. <laughs> let me pull this here. There we go. And you can go ahead and grab more of that meat uh -huh. and just keep wrapping it. And just keep. So you can layer. You can layer, okay. definitely. Of okay. course, if you use the white on the meat itself, that's what gives it more of that veiny look. Okay. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at mine right there. I know. It's not bad. And you, you can pull. Yeah, this is Twisted. like something out of it. <laughs> Twisted. Okay. All right. So then after we kind of get it covered, is that's that, fun though. What, what's the next? <laughs> so from this, he's gonna try and make the small one talk. You understand that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It might have issues talking just because. Yeah. It's not alive. <laughs> it's not alive. Oh, he's so, going he's he's to make it live. All right. okay. So after you've done that, you're uh -huh. gonna grab your pre-made rose that you have on your. Um, Box oh, here. Okay. here. Okay. I'll yep. take this from you. Okay. This one? Yes. Made rose. So we're going to learn how to make one of these roses ourselves as well. Okay. All right. There okay. you go. Uh -huh. So. So you're going to get in here, take out your. It's like a little box yeah, lunch. I love this one. The bottom one. Got yes, it. The yeah. bottom one. The bottom one. The bottom one. The bottom one. Oh, yes. here with the. There okay. Oh. And now, and now we're going to take our plastic cup that you have plastic right in front cup. of you. Got it. And you're going to place it anywhere on your tray that you would like. Okay. You're going to take eight slices. Uh-huh. And you're just going to start placing it around the cup. Just layer it, like kind of halfway layering it, right? Yes. Okay. Two. One, two. And, and leave okay. something hanging over the edge, right? Obviously? <laughs> yes. Okay. You can just place it there. And then you're going to be left with about eight more. Uh-huh. So we're going to place that on your cutting board. Uh, oh, where's my flat? Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> That's going to be kind of half ways. Got it. Uh-huh. One, two. Two. Uh -huh. We may run Three. out. We can totally Three. count. Three. Okay. Four. <laughs> Five. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And after you've done that, you're going to take that salami and fold it in half. Take the salami. And it's going to look just like a roll. Oh, my. Okay. Okay. Okay, got it. Uh-huh. And then you're just going to roll that entire line. Oh, no way. Oh, okay. No way. Wait, so it, you can just... Oh, oh and it's, it's great because it's sticky enough to kind of yes. stick together. Yes. To help you out. So now that you, the, the, once you get that roll done, you are able to just place it on your cup and you have a beautiful rose. Come on, come on. Here we go. Here oh, we go. my gosh. <laughs> no way. I yeah. That was so easy to do. It's so easy. Okay. You can place it. It's a great way so to just add some uh, art to your food. Ah! Perfect. <laughs> I'll I'll be be out of this. Darn. Where are we? Over on that one? Look at that. Look this at that. So it looks like we're professionals. We're not. You I are. <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely a professional. So you can place that anywhere yeah. on your tray that you would like. I'm going to celebrate yeah. with a piece of slime here. Sorry. Okay. Next, we're going to learn how to do a kiwi star. So you're going to take your, ku your kiwi Cute. and kiwi. you're going to have okay. your knife. Mm -hmm. And you're actually just going to zigzag okay. right around the kiwi itself. Okay. All the way around. Zig. Zag. zag. Are you oh, going to say that the whole time. way around zigzag? I zigzag. Okay, okay so if, while, while we're yeah. doing this, tell us, of course, a little bit, you know, how you got started with this charcuterie, charbuterie, whichever one it is, depending on the season uh, <laughs> business. <laughs> of course. So I actually started doing this just for friends and family during the pandemic. Um, I was part of the hospitality industry, and we all know how 2020 went. Yep. So I just needed something to keep me sane during that period of time, and I found love around being able to create food art and just bring my friends and family around the table and just have a great time. So that was a great thing to do. And there you can you uh, put in orders right now for mm -hmm. Halloween, but yes. also if you're looking for Christmas parties, Christmas, order now. yes. Make sure that you go ahead and head over to our website, send us an email. Um, our Christmas availability is um, limited, so just make sure that you get, get a spot. 
Okay. And there's a deal for folks watching right now, right? Yes. Go ahead and head over to our website. Um, this pertains to any order, and you'll get 10% uh, off. Just use the code SA Live. Food truck over there uh, at Bitters yeah. and uh, 281. So check it on out there. I know. This is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Nubia. Thank of course. Thank you. All right. So again, don't forget to use the code SA Live, all one word, get 10% off. All right. Alas, poor Yorick. Oh, I knew him see, well. See, look, they, 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 oh, they're back. Okay. Okay. Did you have something to say? Well, I'm, I'm not leading. To okay, say? or she? From I don't know. fun entertainment, fun family, because <laughs> it's theater, so I'm getting into theater mode here with the Shakespeare business. But this is magic theater where Jen's going, so I'm kind of at a little wing of my way here. So uh, it's not, it's not obvious at all. Okay, our Jen Tobias Trusky shows us how it's helping to raise awareness on dyslexia. Just leave them here and. Oh! Dang. It's a one-of-a-kind show here at the Magic Theater for audiences to better understand what it's like to have dyslexia. Today, we get a preview of Eddie and Vinny. So, what's my fact of the day? Seriously, now? I love how they look right at you, as if they really are thinking. <laughs> And I'm joined now by Anthony Runfola, the artistic director here at the Magic Theater. Anthony, so excited to be here. Let's talk about what makes this production unique. Well, this is a world premiere production. Mm -hmm. uh, we commissioned it about a year ago from playwright Jenny Millinger, and we spent the last year and a half, two years developing this script. So San Antonio is the first city to see Eddie and Vinny. Wow, and what about the storyline? What can you tell me? Sure, so the story centers on Eddie, who is a young boy uh, struggling with dyslexia. He's having trouble in school, and he faces uh, the prospect of going to summer school. Uh, could happen if he can't get his grades up. So he has his best friend, is also his pet gecko, uh, named Vinny. And we're not sure if Vinny is trying to distract Eddie, or is he encouraging Eddie to lean into his unique mind? I've been staring at the ceiling for seven hours and 26 minutes. I need a new fact. Fine. Fact of the day from science. Ah, oh, science, the foundation of knowledge. One in five people have dyslexia, mm -hmm. and so often it goes undetected. And so one of the things the play can, we hope the play will do, is to um, ma maybe parents come and they oh, see uh, behaviors in Eddie like that they might recognize in their child. Or a teacher, who are teachers are really on the front line here uh, for detecting this. Maybe a teacher sees a behavior in their student, too. And so the play can open up conversations and maybe look encourage folks to look into what, what might be happening with with their, with their child. Uh, so I play Vinny, who is Eddie's best friend and possibly a pet gecko, possibly an imaginary friend, we're not sure, um, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. So I get to pop in different places of the set and things and <laughs> I'm really just there to help him uh, with his, his attempt to not go to summer school. So we work together as buddies and try to make magic happen. Penelope. Get into character for this. Ooh, yes, I do my gecko movements. Um, I definitely do a lizard pose, yoga pose. Um, yeah, we just we just have fun together. I'm really lucky we are a family here with our actors, our other actors. So we just have fun. It says, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. You're running through October 28th. That's right. But during the week, there's some options for schools, correct? That's right, yes. So uh, all week long during the week, uh, schools can come in on a field trip and see the show right here downtown at the Magic Theater. And then weekends, the general public is can come and buy tickets. The word you're looking for is monofocal, and that's why I can see things close up and far away at the same time. We have so many other uh, opportunities to come see it. We have sensory-friendly performances, uh, and we have an ASL performance as well so we try to make it as accessible for everyone. A weird little brain? It's just a weird little brain. Useless, right? Yeah, useless. And I can see patterns form right before my monofocal eyes. And remember, there's lots of interactive elements here on stage when you come watch Eddie and Vinny. The show runs through October 28th. For more information, head over to EssayLive.com, click the As Seen on the Essay Live tab, or scan that QR code on your screen. Really cool concept. Magic mm -hmm. Theater, you know, we always took the, the kids there. And I believe this is also getting national attention, what they're doing there. So there's also an ALS, excuse me, ASL interpreted show on October 22nd at 5 p.m. and a sensory friendly performance on October 25th at 10.30 a.m. For more information, we have their website on essaylive.com. Just click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. 
All right, still ahead on SA Live. Need some comfort food to warm you up today? We can make mac and cheese. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. Even better, our local chef Sarah shares her simple but delicious recipe. But first, are you a last minute person or maybe just want to save a couple of bucks? We're showing you how to make some great DIY Halloween costumes. That's next on SA Live.